Hey everybody, welcome to Earth's Changing Climate Chapter 2, Lesson 2.2, Reading Past Climate Changes on Earth. It is April, well it should be April 21st, the date's wrong, let me change that really quick, this is so confusing for everyone, oh my gosh. Alright, hey, our unit question has not changed, what causes climate change? Chapter question also has not changed for Chapter 2, why do temperatures on Earth increase when the amount of carbon dioxide or methane in the Earth system increases? And our investigation question is actually also the same as yesterday, how can the amount of energy absorbed by Earth's surface change. I don't think we have any new vocabulary terms here to address. Um, we definitely will be talking about trend and fluctuation today uh, and some of these gases also and obviously talking about the atmosphere and climate. But let's go ahead and jump into today's lesson. You know what I like to do. I always like to read the introduction. So lesson 2.2 reading past climate changes on earth. Earth is always changing and it hasn't always been the way it is today. I guess that makes sense, right? If it's always been changing, of course it wouldn't be the way. It, anyway, you will learn about two different times in Earth's past during which the climate was not at all like it is now. And you will begin to discover how these changes can happen. Hey, maybe you already knew that, maybe not. Um, but yeah, we have had times in the past when uh, Earth was significantly warmer or significantly colder and looked very different than it does today. Well, we're gonna look at that, look at that and uh, try to figure out maybe why some of those things happen. But let's go ahead and jump into the warm up first. <laughs> and here we go. Uh, our question, our question, could an increase in energy from the sun be the cause of the most recent climate change? That's a great question. Uh, maybe some of you had that idea as to why the temperatures were getting warmer on Earth. Uh, compare these two graphs. Okay, the, see two graphs down there from the same time period. That's good. Uh, one with data about global average temperature and the other with data about energy from the sun and then answer the question. There's actually more than one question, but... We'll let them we'll let them off the hook here. Okay, I see they weren't lying to us. Global average temperatures from 1880 to 2009. Energy from the sun from looks like 1880 to 2000. We'll say nine. And uh, okay, looking at those. All right, I see what's going on. We see temperature. Okay, uh, here's our question. Examine the trend for sunlight. Does the sunlight trend mirror the temperature trend? In other words, does sunlight increase at the same time as temperature increases? So, okay, trend, that's right. What does the graph do overall? What is the data telling us overall over the long period of time? What they want us to do is look at, okay, energy from the sun, is it doing the same thing as the global average temperature graph? And you'll say yes or no. And then we answer this question. Do you think an increase in energy from the sun could be the cause of the most recent climate change? What is your evidence? Okay, so based on that information, I mean, that's the evidence we're using, right? These graphs. Um, do you think that energy from the sun could be the cause for our most recent climate change. So go ahead and take a minute to uh, analyze those graphs and answer those questions. Do that right now. Pause. Let's take a look at these graphs. Uh, first, let's take a look at our global average temperature. And we've looked at this graph. Uh, oh, I'm zooming in, look at that. We've looked at this graph before and we said, yeah, it looks like there is an increase from 1880 all the way to 2010 in global average temperatures. How big is that increase? Well. From 13 point, I don't know, a little over 7 to, uh, what do we got there, like 14.5, between 14.5 and 6. So we might say that's not a very big increase, but as we will learn later, that can cause very significant uh, 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 things to happen. And here's our energy from the sun. Uh, looks like it starts off uh, 1365, 1365 and a half um, ooh, watts per square meter. Okay. Um, and hmm, does it look like there's an increase here? There's definitely a lot of fluctuations, um, but it kind of looks like it stayed overall mostly the same. What we want to look at, okay, we see temperature from uh, global average temperatures increasing. Did energy from the sun increase at the same time as our global average temperatures? And we'd say, no, no, it really doesn't look like that. We see a lot of fluctuation here going up and down, up and down, and up and down. But no really overall trend to uh, an increase of energy. Whereas uh, global average temperatures, we see up and down, up and down. But we do see an overall trend uh, of an increase in global temperatures. So that's what I would say for that. Uh, let's, oh, where's my, oh. I zoomed in, that's why. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the reading, the reading. You are going to read Past Climate Changes on Earth. You can click on it right there. Um, 
Hey, interesting, because the homework yesterday, uh, didn't we look at a period in time where uh, Earth's climate was different? Uh, and we had to answer a question about that. Well, now we're actually going to read about it. Uh, so go ahead, take, take a moment, read that article, and uh, come back to me. Pause. All right, what'd you think of that article? I think it's fascinating to imagine, try to imagine the Earth in these different states uh, so long ago. I mean, like they talked about uh, in the Arctic being warm and then uh, periods of time when uh, Earth was just covered in ice and snow. And what was it all coming back to? It was all coming back to an imbalance in the amount of energy entering and the amount of energy exiting, whether one was uh, more than the other. And that either caused the Earth to warm or it caused the Earth to cool. So uh, let's go ahead. Let's skip number three. You are welcome. And let's go straight to number four, your homework. Yeah, I know. We're almost done. We're jumping into the sim. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be decreasing either carbon dioxide or methane. Okay. First thing you're doing, just like last thing we did, uh, you need to predict before you jump in and start toggling everything, predict what's going to happen. And I think I hope, I hope you have a pretty good idea. So first, number one here, decide what are you going to decrease, carbon dioxide or methane, and then tell me what you think is going to happen. If you decrease, let's say, carbon dioxide in the sim, the temperature will what? What do you think would happen if you decrease carbon dioxide? And then predict what will happen to energy entering and exiting. We've seen these types of questions before, whether we think more energy will enter or exit or less or the same. What do you think will happen if you decrease one of those gases? And then you'll jump to number two. Number two, you're going to actually test it. Okay, so whichever gas you chose, that's when you're going to test. And it says run the sim until it reaches 20. We need to make sure we have like that baseline first. Pause the sim and then decrease carbon dioxide or methane. Run the test until the timer reaches 40. And then you're going to record all of your observations. Record all of your observations right down below. Tell me, hey, when you decrease this, what happened to the temperature? Did more energy exit, less energy exit? Did it all stay the same? As soon as you finish that, go ahead and hit hand in, and you are done.